Uh, good morning. Uh, today we will discuss about the semiconductors. In last session, we discussed uh, about uh, basics of semiconductor phys uh, physics of uh, semiconductors. So valence band, conduction band, energy gap, Fermi level. All these uh, covered in the last session. Today. After completion of uh, this uh, lesson, uh, he, you will be able to know the know what is semiconductors. What are the semiconductors? Uh, you are able to study the features of semiconductors. You can understand the structure of semiconductor. You can study about. Uh, P type and uh, N type semiconductors. This P type and N type semiconductors are the two types uh, and comes under the extrinsic semiconductor. So before entering into the session, before entering into this uh, semiconductors, just briefly uh, go through what is semiconductor. In last session, we studied about the insulators, conductors, semiconductors based on their uh, energy gap and based on their the resistivity. Here the semiconductor is a material whose electrical properties lies in between those of uh, insulators and uh, good conductors. The electrical property lies in between insulators and conductors. And these materials have almost an empty conduction band. Semiconductors have an empty conduction band and a valency band fully filled valency band. And the energy gap between the valency band and conduction band is very low. This is the order of uh, one electron, ele one electron volt. The energy gap is equal to one electron volt. At uh, zero degree Celsius, at zero degree Celsius, there are no electrons in conduction band in the semiconductors. The valency band is completely filled. If increase the temperature the width of the band gap energy band gap decreases so the sum of the electrons are liberated into the conduction band or you can say the conductivity of semiconductor increases with the temperature if you increase the temperature the electron from valency band jumps into conduction band so the conductivity increases such departing electrons leaves behind a hole in the valency band the electron which moves uh, from valency to conduction so there is a the electron leaves a positive or absence of electron in a valency band so here uh, it is a positive uh, charges this is known as hole so here the semiconductor current is uh, you can say that some of the electrons and uh, uh, hole current flows in the opposite direction in semiconductors so semiconductors Examples for the semiconductor silicon, germanium, gallium. So, the semiconductors energy gap is very low and conductivity or resistivity is in between insulators and conductors. So, enter into the chapter you have to 
गेट मिनिमम आइडिया अबाउट द क्रिस्टल स्ट्रक्चर द सेमी कंडक्टर्स लाइक जर्मेनियम सिलिकॉन दे हैर दे आर द क्रिस्टल क्रिस्टलाइन स्ट्रक्चर दैट इज द एटम्स आर क्रिस्टलाइन स्ट्रक्चर मीन्स द एटम्स आर अरेज इन अ थ्री डायमेंशनल पीरियाडिक मैनर दिस पीरियाडिक अरेजमेंट ऑफ अ क्रिस्टल इज कॉल्ड एज अ लैटिस सो द पीरियाडिक अरेजमेंट ऑफ क्रिस्टल इज कॉल्ड एज अ लैटिस here all the atoms are arranged in a systematic manner systematic manner like this right so in any crystal atoms stress far from a single fixed position they are the arranged in a Uh, distance with a fixed position the thermal vibrations associated with uh, atoms are centered about this position uh, for the semiconductor there is a unit cell unit cell which represents the entire lattice by repeating the unit cells throughout the crystal we can generate entire lattice so here the crystal structure the crystals belongs to the these uh, semiconductors uh, like germanium and silicon crystals belongs to the cubic crystal family so here we have different uh, types of uh, crystalline structures they are the in, uh, based upon the symmetry and uh, internal structure uh, there are seven different uh, types of crystal lattices uh, the these uh, seven types uh, are three basic types of unit cells uh, in cubic crystal system uh, they are the simple cubic base centered cubic cubic face centered cubic like this here e, e, the dimensions are called uh, the dimensions of these crystal crystalline lattice are called as the lattice constant the crystallized is important for these cubic lattices so each atom in these uh, systems surrounded by four equidistant neighbors that lies on the uh, corners right the unit cell is a representative for the entire lattice in the crystal the crystalline structure gives the fixed periodic arrangement of atoms in a crystals so the crystalline structure is important for the semiconductors or any other material so how the atomic binding is there in bonding in there is is there in the semiconductors these are the crystalline in structure their atoms are arranged in order as a crystalline lattice crystal lattice these materials are the tetravalent materials the semiconductors uh, like germanium and silicon are the tetravalent uh, uh, material means the four valency valency electrons are four in the germanium and silicon uh, the neighboring atom form a covalent bond by sharing four electrons uh, with each other to achieve an inert gas structure for stability they are sharing the four electrons uh, of neighboring atoms they are bonding the covalent bond the two dimensional uh, here the each pair of uh, lines the covalent bonds each pair of electron uh, develops a covalent bond it seems that each atom has eight electrons each atom has a eight electrons 
so the the when the attain the inert gas structure eight uh, electrons in outermost then it becomes a strong stable so in here the each uh, atom shares a valency electron with uh, each of its uh, four neighborings therefore they forms a stable structure the covalent bonds have to be broken to provide electron for conduction we have to break, break this covalent bond for the conduction there are many ways of rupturing the covalent bonds setting the electron free on this you have to increase the temperature above the 0 degree kelvin so covalent crystals are characterized by uh, hardness and brittleness their brittleness is due to the uh, adjacent atoms most must remain in accurate alignment since the bond is strongly directional uh, formed along the joining the atoms the hardness is due to the great strength of the covalent bonds in between them so here the atomic bonding in the semiconductors are the covalent bond uh, they are sharing the electrons these uh, pure semiconductors uh, germanium and silicon are uh, tetravalent means uh, four valency electrons are available so they are uh, pairing they are sharing the each uh, nib four electrons with the neighboring then the uh, the covalent bond develops in between the x between the electrons here the semiconductors are two types the semiconductors uh, which are available in the pure form extremely pure form they are intrinsic semiconductors or you can say that the pure semiconductors the which semiconductors are not extremely pure uh, they are added some impurities that uh, semiconductors called as a intrinsic extrinsic semiconductors are impure semiconductors based on the added impurity these extrinsic semiconductors are still divided into p type semiconductor and n type semiconductor so p type represents a positive type n type represents negative type semiconductors so intrinsic semiconductors intrinsic semiconductors are the semiconductors material is in material in its extremely pure form extremely pure uh, the, the pure extremely pure semiconductors are called as a intrinsic semiconductors he in this uh, semiconductors the energy gap is very small uh, in the intrinsic semiconductor the energy gap is very small so that at room temperature or ordinary temperature many electrons uh, possess sufficient energy to jump across the small energy gap between the valency and conduction band so here uh, the electrons liberated into the conduction band in the in extrinsic uh, intrinsic semiconductor electron goes to the conduction band a positively charged hole is created in a valency band positively charged hole is created in a valency band so the here in the valency band electron moves and hole is created the created hole is filled with the electron and subsequently um, electron uh, hole is created uh, when the electric field is applied to this uh, pure semiconductors uh, at the temperature more than the 0 kelvin conduction electrons moves to anode and uh, holes to valency so Uh, in these semiconductors current consists of movement of electrons and holes in the opposite directions electron current is due to the movement of electrons in the conduction band movement of electrons in the conduction band 
whereas the whole current is within the valency band resulting the holes jumps from one atom to another atom here pure semiconductor electrical conductivity is due to the thermally generated electron hole pair so here electron hole pair is generated due to the thermal thermal temperature so you can say that in pure semiconductor in the thermally generated charge carriers are only means of conduction uh, so in this uh, uh, intrinsic semiconductors the current number of electrons are equals to the number of holes in the valency conduction valency band respectively so examples for the intrinsic semiconductor are pure semiconductors are pure germanium and pure silicon so forbidden energy gap for germanium is 0.72 electron volts for silicon 1.1 electron volts here the fermi level lies in between middle exactly middle of the energy gap so fermi level is the highest occupied level that an electron can occupy highest energy level uh, electron can occupy is a fermi level so this fermi level is exactly in between the forbidden energy gap right so here the hole what is a hole hole is a absence of electron in valency band when the electron jumps from higher energy valency to here this is see this is a valency and this is the conduction band electron it jumps from here to here so it leaves a hole so electron comes to this point now the side electron jumps to occupies this hole and it leaves a uh, hole here so holes are moving in this direction electrons are moving in this direction electrons are going in this direction and holes are moving in this direction so the absence of uh, electron in a uh, valency band is called as a hole suppose covalent bond is broken covalent bond is broken uh, then electron has to move it moves to upper level then it leaves a hole the neighbor ring uh, electron jumps into the hole place uh, and the hole the empty place is filled and the, so empty place is filled and this uh, the subsequent neighboring place the hole is created the hole is a positive charge carrier uh, electrons with a negative charge carrier uh, here the holes are due to the movement of electrons in the valency band each electron movement corresponds to a collision the drift velocity of holes such uh, much less than the drift velocity of a electron so you can say that in the pure semiconductors or intrinsic semiconductors the number of ele conduction electrons is equals to the number of holes yes. <coughs> so next uh, uh, here fermi level in the uh, intrinsic semiconductor exactly lies between the uh, middle of the energy band the width of energy band are small to compare the forbidden forbidden energy gap between them uh, since the band width is small all levels in the band have same energy energies of all levels in a uh, energies in the all levels valency band are zero uh, right uh, so here uh, holes can be hole is defined as the absence of electron in a valency band is called as a hole right so next extrinsic semiconductors extrinsic semiconductors 
are the semiconductors to which some suitable impurity or doping agent or dopant has been added in extremely small amount is called as a extrinsic semiconductors or a pure semiconductors extrinsic semiconductors are pure semiconductors so whatever the impurity we are adding it is uh, called as a dopant or doping agent the process of add, adding these impurities to the pure semiconductor is called as a doping doping is a process of adding the impurities or dopant to pure semiconductor to get a impure semiconductor or a extrinsic semiconductor so here the whatever the impurity we are adding that impurity is called as a doping agent or dopant or impurity the process of adding these impurities to the pure semiconductor is called as a doping so we are using dop usual doping agents are pentavalent and trivalent here pure semiconductors are the tetravalent four valency or the outermost electrons are four so we are adding suitable impurities so what are the suitable here pentavalent and trivalent the pentavalent atoms are having five valency electrons for pentavalent electrons are for example arsenic antimony phosphorus and trivalent uh, uh, atoms are three valency electrons gallium indium aluminum boron these are the trivalent atoms so by adding these two the pentavalent doping atom is also known as donor so depending on the type of doping material depending on the type of doping material whether we are adding pentavalent or trivalent based on that these extrinsic semiconductors still subdivided into two classes two types one is a n type another one is a p type one is n type another one is a p type so this is based on the dopant so here n type semiconductors this n type semiconductors are added the pure semiconductor is uh, doped by the pentavalent dopant then it becomes as a n type semiconductor so pentavalent doping atoms is a donor atom because it donates or it contributes one electron to the conduction band of pure germanium or silicon here see this antimony is uh, having pentavalent it has one one two three four and five it has five electrons but germanium has four electrons so it is combining with the four one two these two these two these two and these two here one excess electron is available this it donates it has excess electrons so it contributes one electron to the conduction band uh, in this uh, type of uh, semiconductors each atom forms a covalent bond with surrounding four germanium atoms so we are adding arsenic or antimony for germanium we are adding antimony in this case so each antimony electron develops a covalent bond with the germanium 
atoms each antimony atom forms covalent bond with surrounding four germanium atoms with the help of four of its five electrons antimony has five electrons four atoms are uh, sur- formed covalent bond the fifth electron is superfluous and it is loosely bound to the antimony atom so it can easily excited from valency band to the conduction band by applying uh, electric field or increase the thermal energy the free electron fifth electron easily move from valency to conduction band the particularly every antimony atom introduces the germanium lattice contributes one conduction electron into the germanium lattice without creating a positive hole so antimony is called as a donor impurity antimony is called as a donor impurity and makes the pure germanium an n type extrinsic semiconductor so here we can memorize like this uh, we can associate this n in donor in donor uh, in the n means uh, n type material or negative charge carrier your electron it has excess electron so excess negative charge so uh, you can say that n type is a negative charge carrier and uh, by giving we have one valence electron the donor atom becomes a positively charged ion but it cannot take part in the conduction because it's firmly fixed to or tied into the crystal lattice so apart from electrons and holes intrinsically available general the addition of antimony greatly increases the number of conduction conduction electrons here the electron and holes are available in intrinsic germanium or pure germanium when you add some antimony it greatly increases the number of conduction electrons and the concentration of electrons in the conduction band is increased and exceed the concentration of holes in the valency band because of this the fermi level shift upward to the bottom of the conduction band fermi level goes up for the conduction towards the conduction band uh, the number of charge carriers has become more in conduction band than the valency band in n type semiconductors in terms of energy levels the fifth electron of antimony has an energy just below the conduction band so the energies are uh, 0.001 electron volt below conduction band of germanium and 0.054 for silicon it is seen from the above discussion description uh, that n type semiconductors in n type semiconductor electrons are the majority charge carriers and holes are the minority charge carriers hence the n type semiconductors conducts principally by the electrons in nearby empty conduction electron band a process is called as a excess conduction this process is called as a excess conduction the even though the n type semiconductor has excess electrons it is necessary still it is electrically neutral even though it has a excess electrons excess conduction electrons still it is electrically neutral neutral so because by the addition of donor impurities the number of electrons available for the conduction purpose becomes more than the number of holes available intrinsically but the total charge 
of the semiconductor does not change because of donor impurities brings in as much as negative charge as a positive charge so so n type semiconductors are n type extrinsic semiconductors are the semiconductors where the pentavalent material is added to the pure semiconductors they are the donor impurities the negative charge can they has the more negative charges the energy gap fermi energy level goes to uh, towards the uh, conduction band and uh, electrons are the majority charge carriers in uh, n type semiconductors and uh, minority charge carriers are the holes in the n type semi semiconductors next uh, another one is a p type semiconductor p type semiconductors the p type semiconductors are the, the semiconductors with pure semiconductor is added with the trivalent impurities the trivalent impurities are gallium indium aluminum boron these are the trivalent so trivalent atoms is called as the acceptor atoms because it accepts one electron from germanium atom here uh, for germanium boron is added so germanium four germaniums it makes covalent bond with the uh, four germanium but this this is trivalent so it has only three so it uh, makes a bond with the covalent bond with three then here empty place is there this is due to that it requires it uh, it's a acceptor it has a ability to accept an electron the four three electrons bounded with uh, three germanium atoms and one hole is created here in this case three valence electrons of boron atom forms a covalent bond with the four surrounding germanium atoms but one bond is left incomplete and it gives rise to a hole this boron which is called as a acceptor impurity causes as many positive holes in the germanium crystal as there are boron atom therefore it produces p type p p for positive positive type extrinsic semiconductors for memory we can say to memorize this is a acceptor impurity so acceptor from acceptor p for p type for positive type charge carriers so in this type of semiconductors conduction is movement of holes in the valency band conduction in the hole conduction of the holes in the valency band holes form in the majority carriers whereas the electron constitutes as minority charge carriers the process of conduction is called as a deficit conduction in the n type it's a excess conduction this uh, in p type it is called as a defensive conduction because the uh, charge carrier electrons are minority charge carriers here and uh, electron holes are the positive charge carriers in the p type semiconductors so the holes in the covalent bond is more than the concentration of the electron in the conduction band in this uh, semiconductors the holes in the valency band are more than the concentration of electrons in the conduction band 
so therefore the fermi level shifts near to the valency band fermi level shifts to near to the valency band the acceptor level acceptor levels lies immediately above the fermi level acceptor level immediately lies to the above the fermi level the conduction is by me is by means of holes movement at the top of the valency band acceptor level readily accepting electrons from the valency band here uh, even though the p type semiconductor has excess holes of conduction purpose on the whole it is electrically neutral for the same reason as given in the n type uh, semiconductors because uh, addition of donor impurities uh, the number of electrons available for the conduction purpose because of more than the number of holes available intrinsically that's why this is electrically neutral so in place of pure germanium or silicon no free charge carriers are available at 0 degree kelvin so as its temperature is raised as its temperature is raised the covalent bonds are broken by heat energy so electron hole pairs are produced electron hole pairs are produced so these are called thermally generated charge carriers so if you break the covalent bond by the temp uh, increasing temperature the electron hole pair can be produced these are thermally generated charge carriers they are also known as uh, intrinsically available charge carriers the number is very small the thermally generated charge carriers number is very small and pure or intrinsic semiconductor can convert it into p type by adding the acceptor impurities which add a large number of holes to it hence p type material contains the large number of positive charge positive holes most of them being added impurity holes with one way one very small number of thermally generated ones so one way is to produce holes is adding impurity and another way is thermally generated so a very small number of thermally generated electrons are available in the p type so obviously in the p type material the number of holes the both added holes by adding impurity we are getting some holes and by thermally generated is much more than the electron the much more than the electrons so in such a material holes constitute a majority charge carriers and electrons forms a minority charge carriers in the p type similarly in n type semiconductors the number of electrons the both the added the electron generated by adding pentavalent impurities to the pure semiconductor and thermally generated semiconductor thermally generated electrons much larger than the thermally generated holes so in a n type semiconductor the electrons are the majority charge carriers and uh, the holes are the minority charge carriers so the charge carriers are both uh, by adding impurities or by adding by 
थर्मल थर्मली जनरेटेड ही द सेमी कंडक्टर आर पी टाइप एंड एन टाइप सो इन सम केसेस दिस वन इज नेगेटिव टाइप एंड अनदर वन इज पॉजिटिव टाइप सो इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू यूज एज अ पी टाइप और सेमी कंडक्टर एन टाइप सेमी कंडक्टर सो इट इज पॉसिबल इफ इट इज पॉसिबल टू मैन्युफैक्चर ए सिंगल पीस ऑफ सेमी कंडक्टर मटेरियल ऑफ half of uh, with the uh, trivalent material is doped and half of the uh, material doped with the pentavalent right so half of the pure semiconductor crystal is doped with the uh, p type and half of the uh, with the n type it is possible then it creates a junction right it creates a junction so that is called as a pn junction pn junction here the what are the differences between the intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors so the basic differences uh, in between intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors are intrinsic semiconductors are extremely pure form there are examples uh, silicon and germanium in extrinsic semiconductors are impure the pure are added with some impure material the impurities are pentavalent and trivalent in intrinsic semiconductors the number of free electrons are equal to the number of holes in extrinsic semiconductor the number of free electrons are not equal to the number of holes in p type semiconductors in extrinsic semiconductors are divided into two types based on the doping material the n type semiconductors are having more number of electrons than the holes and p type semiconductors having more number of holes than the electrons so in intrinsic semiconductor the conductivity electrical conductivity is low as the extrinsic semiconductors the electrical conductivity is high compared to the intrinsic so the electrical conductivity of intrinsic semiconductors is very low that's why we are adding some impurities to increase the conductivity increase the charge carriers so we are adding some impurities they are the trivalent or pentavalent in intrinsic semiconductor or pure semiconductors the electrical conductivity is a form of temperature alone but in extrinsic semiconductor electrical conductivity depends on temperature as well as the amount of uh, impurities added and type of impurities added to the pure semiconductors so electrical conductivity of the extrinsic semiconductor totally depends on the temperature the in the extrinsic semiconductor the electrical conductivity depends on the temperature impurity amount of impurity and the type of impurity added to the pure semiconductor in pure semiconductors or intrinsic semiconductors the fermi level lies exactly in the middle of the valency band and conduction band the fermi level is in between the valency and conduction band but in extrinsic semiconductors are impure semiconductor the fermi level either near to the conduction band or near to the valency band in p type semiconductor fermi level is near to the valency band and in n type semiconductor fermi level 
is near to the conduction band so this these are the basic differences between intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors so as same extrinsic semiconductors are divided into two one is n type another one is a p type so what is the difference between this n type and p type so p type are uh, semiconductors pure semiconductor is added with trivalent trivalent elements for example gall aluminum gallium indium added to the pure semiconductor then it gives the uh, p type semiconductor p type semiconductors all holes are majority charge carriers and electrons are the minority charge carriers in the p type semiconductors fermi level lies near to the valency band and n type semiconductors are the semiconductors the fifth group elements are the pentavalent group elements are added to the pure semiconductor the phosphorus arsenic antimony bismuth etc added to the pen, pure semiconductor then it gives an n type semiconductor in n type semiconductors uh, the electrons are majority charge carriers and holes are minority charge carriers the fermi level lies near to the conduction band so these are the basic differences and uh, basics about the semiconductor the semiconductor is a pure and impure impure semiconductor is still divided into two one is p type and another one is a n type so hope uh, got the concept of semiconductor what is semiconductor what are the types of semiconductor and what are the charge carriers of the semiconductor and what are the basic of semiconductor how the semiconductor forms p type and n type doping dopant right got the concepts about all these right thank you thank you very much